I, I've got some strong feelings. Let me, I, I, I'll start this off on Justin Fields. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think even though I do believe Justin Fields is flawed, I think right now when I look at what is happening in the Chicago Bears organization, in the NFC North, and with the future of their draft position, if I were the Bears, I would bypass a quarterback in this draft and do one of two things. Trade down to, let's say, number three, let's just say, or maybe number four, but probably no lower than three. Trade down to number three and get an extra one from somebody who's willing to trade their 2024 one, um, whoever is going to have the third pick. And then you trade down to number three. Three jumps up to one to get the quarterback. Trade down to number three and take Marvin Harrison Jr. Or trade down to number 12. And you get three ones. You get the 12th pick in the draft. You get next year's one. And you either get two twos or uh, or a you know the next year's one because you will be able to trade two drafts out um, you know once you get to the postseason. So they could get a team's next two first round draft picks as well as a pick 10, 12, 13, whatever. I would rather do that for a very simple reason. I think the Bears, so often what we do is we look at quarterbacks as the nirvana for teams that are rebuilding. The only problem I have with doing that right now is that <clears throat> there aren't many teams that have been in as unique a position as the Chicago Bears. They pick number one in this year's dra in the 24 draft, and they already have a guy at quarterback who their fans are chanting for. Their fans want to keep Justin Fields. I think most do, or at least a majority of them do. And they want to use this draft and next year's draft and maybe even <clears throat> the 26th draft to build the team around Justin Fields. So that's what I would do. What say you, Miles Simmons? I would not do that. And the reason is... You have a number one overall pick and there are, you know, quarterbacks out there that you can say it may or may not be generational, right? So I think it's incumbent upon Ryan Poles right now and the rest of that front office and the scouting department and whoever else to do as much research as you can possibly do between now and whatever day the draft is going to be held to say, all right, is Justin Fields our best option going forward? Or, and not just for next year, but for the, you know, however long, long term, right? Or do we reset the clock and go with Caleb Williams or Drake May or whoever else? And a, why is because it's almost a business decision more than it is a quarterback and belief in Justin Fields and all of this decision, right? I mean, this is a regime that did not pick Justin Fields. And Fields has played better but he's not been great. And at this point, when you're going into a quarterback's fourth year, not only do you have to make the decision on the fifth year option, but basically you're going to be eventually saying, look, we're either going to pay him or we're not going to pay him. And if you're not convinced that you are going to pay Justin Fields, then I think you need to cut the cord and you need to say, let's restart that clock on trying to figure out and on trying to pay a quarterback with somebody who is younger and then we build that team around them because, hey, you're probably you're too good to be picking at number one overall again. Right. So this is something where because you have this extra bonus number one overall pick because of what you did last year, you now have to say, well, we're not going to be in this position again. And if we pass on Caleb Williams or Drake May or whoever else and they become elite and we still have Justin Fields and then we paid him and he's not. Like, what did we do? I think that there's an element of the known to Justin Fields where you say he may be very, very good, but he's not convinced us that we need to pay him yet. So if that's the case, 
then thank you very much, Justin Fields. We appreciate your contributions. But because we have this number one overall pick here and it's extra, we're going to use that and we're going to pick our next quarterback and we're going to ship you off somewhere, maybe Las Vegas, Atlanta, I don't know, get a three, perhaps a low two, we'll see. But that's the way I'd approach it. If for no other reason, then if you keep Justin Fields, you have to pay him. And based on what I've seen, I'm not sure I would want to do that yet. Who says you have to pay him? He's under team control, potentially, for two more years. You don't have to pay him. You know, what you could could do, what you could do very simply, is you could say to Justin Fields, let's be honest, both sides. We're not positive, and we can do something in this draft. And Miles, keep, keep this in mind, okay? If they do trade down and get two additional ones beyond this year, beyond the 24 draft, think about that for a second. That would mean that, and let's just say, I'm going to approximate this right now. Let's just say right now that you have this year, let's say picks 10 and 13, let's just say, in this year's draft because you've got your own pick So let's just say you're picking 10th and 13th. And then each of the next two years, each one, each of the next two years, you have two ones. So who's to say you'll never be in this position again? And who's to say that there aren't going to be really good quarterbacks from here on out? And by the way, by the way, who's to say that with the 13th pick in the draft this year, you don't take Michael Penix, Bo Nix, I don't know. Who I, I don't I don't study these guys, but it looks like there's going to be five quarterbacks that are going to generate first round buzz. So to think that one of them, if you if you really really love him and is there at thirteen, you could just pick him, put him on the team, and let the best quarterback win. Now is that the best thing necessarily for Justin Fields' psyche? No. So maybe you don't even consider that, but. I think overall, there's this feeling out there, and I've read it a few places. Well, if you keep Fields this year, beyond this year, you got to pay him. Maybe, but I don't think you have to pay him a drop-dead amount of money. I don't think you have to make the mistake that the Giants made with Daniel Jones and pay him $40 million. I think what you have to do is you got to give him a sweetener this year. You got to exercise the fifth-year option Give him a sweetener and be willing, be willing after year four or at the trading deadline of year four to either trade Justin Fields or to get rid of him at the end of year four and just take the bite on that, uh, on the fifth year, uh, on the fifth year salary that would be killing you on the cap, but I'd be willing to do it. And Miles, look, I think the last thing I'd say about Fields is that He's not made this a no-doubter. But I guess I look at the fact that everybody, when they think about quarterbacks in the draft, they get all goo-goo-eyed. And they say, oh my God, Caleb Caleb Williams, can't miss guy. Drake May, can't miss guy. Well, Miles, the fact is that about 40% of the picks at the very top of the draft, at the quarterback position, miss. So that's why I would just say, and again, I don't mean to be down on Caleb Williams. All I know is that he had a crummy senior last year at USC. And he's going to come into the NFL with some legitimate question marks. And what happens to all young high pick quarterbacks early in their NFL career. They get chased all over the field. Look at poor Bryce Young this year. How how can people tell whether he's any good or not? You know, he's got to play a track meet every game because he's got to just run every game. So look what happened to Caleb Williams when he played Notre Dame. He got chased all over the place and he was awful. So I think Caleb Williams obviously is a good quarterback, good prospect. But I'm just saying, be careful what you wish for when you look at the top pick in the draft as the answer to all your problems.
I, and and I, I think you, you have a point there. And it, that's why I'm saying like it's incumbent on Ryan Poles and the rest of his staff to think about this. OK, you've got to figure this out. Is this the 2020 draft class at quarterback or is this 2021? Right. Because if it's 2020, then you need to pick that quarterback. I, I'm sorry. I, that Because look, let Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Tua Tungavailoa, all very, very good players that were picked at the top of that draft. If it's 2021 and it's Trevor Lawrence, where we still got questions, it's Zach Wilson, who's awful, and it's Trey Lance, who got traded, I, then that's not the quarterback that you need to replace him with, right? And that's also Justin Fields' draft class, too. So that's where I'm saying, like, look, you have a big decision to make, and if you don't anticipate being here at the top of the draft, whether you're not, you get extra picks and you can move around and da-da-da, and we saw that Houston did that with the two and then going up to get the three and you know being aggressive and getting a guy like Will Anderson, who's also been really good this year. I, I, I just think that from the team construction standpoint, if you can get that guy in, that can be a transformational guy. Like Joe Burrow transformed the Cincinnati Bengals. If you are convinced yep. that that's the guy that you can get at number one overall, you pick him because that guy does not come out in every single draft class. And then you have to surround uh, him mm, with talent. All right? You can't. You can't have a crappy left. That I would. That I would totally agree pick. with. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you on that. Um, but. It ha that's that's the only way I would waive what I'm saying. Sure. That if you're convinced this guy is Burrow, that that this guy you know is Mahomes or whatever, if if you are convinced and you want to stake your professional career on it, that I then all bets are off with what I've said. But I guess I just look at this and I just say, and again, I don't watch much college football <laughs> but i i don't watch my, it'd be dumb for me to say so i wouldn't take caleb williams but right. in my head i don't see caleb williams as joe burrow but anyway True. miles listen but, well, thanks Peter, so much here, for one, everything let me, get, this let me week. get one more thing yeah, in there go one more. Let me get one more thing in there i don't think it's just i don't think it's just the play on the field too when i talk about that right it's the attitude. It's can this guy be a quarterback and be the leader of men? And that's why I'm saying you've got to study this stuff, right? And I, I've, just like you, I don't, I don't study that. I watch plenty of college, but I don't have all the access to all the stuff with the scout staff behind the scenes, you know, where they're going and they're talking to people that have known this guy all of their lives. That's where I'm saying the research has to come in and the research can't just be, Oh, he's a great player on the field. It's what does he do off the field? How does he study in the building? How does he lead? Those are all the things that encompass being a franchise, you know, guy that can turn things around really, really quickly. So that's what I would say. And if that's what you're convinced that, then that's why you pick him at number one.